damage from the glimpse but oh these star blacks are rushing through is are they gonna go back for the shadow fiend not the first time we see the shadow fiend being played in epl americas first time around wasn't so successful the hero boasts around a 44 46 percent win rate in the immortal bracket currently so far, so good though, as the uh, Sal team seem to be way more content with banning the Shadow Demon, the Kanka, the Gyrocopter, Tiny, and Dark Willow. And now they have about two more minutes of reserve time for their third pick. Taking a quick look at the standings, or oh, if this uh, currently group a, I believe that is correct, yeah, group A, uh, E Star back and Sal team both, uh, both up 2 and 1. And uh, they are fighting uh, to keep themselves in that top three, top four secure spot to advance in the playoffs. Uh, Akatsuki, a team that's currently two and two. So whichever one of these two teams will lose this game, will find themselves in a tie break position versus Akatsuki. With that being said, South team is actually playing Akatsuki tomorrow. So even if East Star Blacks manages to win here today, they... South team still has a fighting chance tomorrow. The fate will be in their own hands. Whereas if East Star loses this series, uh, they will be facing Green Esports, who is currently out of the tournament with and four in this group A. So a lot of play, a lot of stakes here today. Very interesting to see if um, if this Shadowfin is gonna prevail. But South team has been completely caught off guard um, by this SF. And granted, I, I, I. I why nobody's playing the shadow fiend uh, a couple of days ago we had him and like i said completely uh obliterated he was i'm just trying to find out the game the team that was trying to run this shadow fiend and i think it was uh fantasy actually playing it just uh, unsuccessfully no it was x5 gaming and their losing attempt versus bisco south team after spending a bit over two minutes uh, we'll go back for the support. They don't want to show anything else quite yet, and it's gonna be the hoodwink. Uh, really, one of the favorite positions fours we have seen from teams all around the world in a tier one and tier two Dota currently. But uh, hmm. I mean, I'm very happy with South Team's draft. They they not necessarily the most confident thus far, but I think they're getting. The better of uh, this uh, trades and oh, centaur. Great way of disengaging from the shadow fiend. Uh, blink stun initiation, and uh, this tells us the primal beast will be mid. I wonder how the primal shadow fiend matchup goes in mid lane. That is, if this is not going to be a position one shadow fiend with a pangolier mid, still very possible. Spangler, you could be flexed onto offlane. So, uh, quite a few options for East Star back now that uh, will have the next two picks with Sal team uh, having the all around last pick. Plenty of reserve time in the tank for East Star backs where they make yet another. They gotta get a support. Yes. Did this happen, chat? Could we get a crazy support angler? I hope not. But in all honesty, crazier things have happened and it's not going to get a Beastmaster. Wait a minute, this could be a Pangolier support. Right? Pangolier support, Beastmaster awfully in Shadow Fiend mid and still plays for... We're 10 seconds out. I'm tripping, I'm tripping. It's a, a Pango Mead Beast off lane Shadow Fiend the uh, safe lane, most most certainly. And I'm quite curious, how does this SF deal versus a Centaur Hoodwink lane? Yeah, we still need a position one for South team, a lot of options, and Estar Bax is afraid of the Troll Warlord. They will ban it outright. Um, a lot of teams in EPL Americas have stayed really far away. Uh, sadly, from the Weaver, which seems to be a favorite of the current Tier 1 teams. Nobody seems to want to play it. But on the counter, Faceless Void which is one of the heroes played a lot across Tier 1 and in Tier 2. Has been quite a con uh, something to contend for. So, I think the Star Backs will want to ban this Void. 
accusing Clockwork and out by South Team. So, Clockwork doesn't gel that well with the Tusk. Uh, Techies would have been a great call, but Tusk has great setup for the Techies blast off. So you're taking left. Techies outside. No more Shadow Demon either. As a first bad by South Team, no Dark Willow. What is E Star gonna be? Because they have one ban remaining, so what are they afraid of? Arrowblade also still available in the pool. Anga Siren, not quite sure if South Team is running it. Could be a very interesting way of tackling this early presence from E Star backs. One minute of seven. They're not just thinking about the final ban, but they know as soon as they ban, they're gonna instantly, certainly, take their last hero. Sven still in the pool, no gyro. We have seen some teams run with the Medusa. I don't think it's the best game here for self team, as the Pangolier will most certainly fail the Diffusal Blade. I don't think Eastar is still afraid of this. Void still in the pool have a hoodwink disruptor who can deal some damage in the chronosphere maybe prime and is not the best one to follow through but they're afraid of a wind ranger wind ranger quite a strong matchup versus the shadow fiend and wow ogre magi did, did, did we get a patch and i didn't get the note production production oh i am the production sorry ogre magi last pick not overall but still with a Shadow Fiend, it's going to be a great steroid for him. With the Bloodlust, this Shadow Fiend will hit like a truck alongside, I gotta say this, with the Primal Aura from the Primal Beast, this Shadow Fiend will essentially have Moonshard come level 3. Maybe not, maybe maybe not level 3. But later, like, like very early on because of the Bloodlust and the Inner Aura from the Beastmaster, he will hit very fast, but 2 seconds left for South Team. Whoa! Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what's happening right now, but I love what I am seeing. Three of these heroes that nobody plays, the Shadow Fiend, the Ogre Magi, and the Phantom Lancer being uh, on the server in this ever-so-crucial game for Group A of EPL World Series. I feel like I need a minute <laughs> after they, these... I reckon E-Star packs are the slight favorites... On paper, I haven't had the pleasure of casting any South Team games just yet, but Disruptor Hoodwing have been so good. It only supports, though. I'm gonna go with South Team based on draft only because they only have one hero that nobody plays, whereas East Star Backs is running two heroes that nobody's playing. So, only for that reason, I'm gonna slightly favor South Team, but it's gonna be a battle of the tempos. Jim Park, Oscar, and Prada are gonna get up together and gonna try to melt your towers, but if you get into the ultra late game when the Phantom Lancer gets his level 20, level 25, um, I might see South Team have the advantage with that aspect. Not, not the way I was expecting us to start the day here, I'm gonna be completely honest with you all, uh, but I'm, I'm here for all the spice in the game. Spicy, it will indeed. I'm very nice. Set. Dark Mago doesn't have <laughs> any item on the Angelier. Actually, I guess more than the gun. But I mean, compared to the flashy sets that everybody else have, him and uh, XYS uh, don't have anything up to par to that. But let me take us to you. Sorry. Let me take you through the lineups, and we'll do that when we get in game. Okay. We have Dark Mago on the Pangolier, Prada on the Ogre Magi, Jim Park running the Shadow Fiend Demon on the Tusk, and Oscar 
will be playing the Beastmaster, whereas for the side of Team Cell, we've got Masha, Masha running the Hoodwink, Austin on the Disruptor, Osito on Primal uh, East, Arzent on Centaur, Warrunner, and XYS. Phantom Answer. I wonder what the Dota Plus thinks. Okay, Dota Plus definitely favors the draft of Team South for one reason or another. Um, I assume it's because Phantom Lancer is a really strong hero in the Ultra Late game, and usually Dota Plus has the tendency of favoring um, heroes that do carry you to the very, very end of the game. I have to also mention um, one of the aspects that uh, some Prime, some Phantom Lancer players might overlook because Phantom Lancer hasn't been in meta for so, so long has to be that uh, Beastmaster is amazing versus Illusions due to the Aghanim Scepter. Uh, the drums on Oscar will be uh, pretty fatal for this PL smoke right away. Arrow being up. Predicting what Wrap around the dire triangle. Observe a word placed early on from the Let's go back to the high ground and the hoodwink. Getting a shot Again, level one. No bushwreck will be available if needed for a rune contest. 25 seconds. Fuck. Take your shot. We'll throw in. We'll spot. Uh, or less nobody. Then we'll get the first bounty. Austin will trade it up top. Bias will get it. Holding this with a waiting for Masha to come into the play. And now it's going to be a double race combo connecting. And Jim Park, he still has the third race. And Masha's got about to lose his life. First blood going for Jim Park. And now an instant pause coming in from Dark Mago, who's kind of been. Uh, no, he's not being AFK, sorry. He's just uh, blocking his picks under the tower. And the patience plays di pays dividends for Jim Park and Prada, who would be more than happy to get the first blood and the big gold insurgents for the Shadow Fiend, who needs to have a good lane if they want to have a chance at the victory in this matchup. I don't quite know the reason of the pause. Maybe it's just uh, Jim Park might be feeling himself a little bit too much after getting that first blood. And sometimes it's just good to take a second to relax and recompose yourself. I don't have anything against it. And um, especially, like I said, such a crucial game we have on our hands today, ladies and gentlemen. It's very important for everybody, both sides, to relax. And we'll throw the go in the chat.
up top. Uh, this disruptor will try to do his best work using the thunder strike, abusing the fact that they are playing versus a melee hero in the form of Oscar. But these wild axes are gonna do lots of good work. We know down bottom we've got Prada getting lower and lower in HP, and now the final double edge to get the kill in favor of Arzen and Masha. It all started on the back of a few right clicks from the Pango uh, from from the Hoodwing Centaur. No bushwhack, and he was only level one. And Ogre Magi. One of the tankier heroes will die very early on, which is not something you want to see, but I guess I would rather have the support die than Jim Park's SF. Nice body blocking the camp, not revealing that the sentry was also placed. Masha will spot that and not waste the sentry to do that he also... A grenade flying into him. So, Primal Beast in mid. Uh, up to par in last hit with the Pangolier, but Pangolier only pushed the lane under the tower, so Osito will get back in the last hit department. So, um, such a tough lane for uh, with Phantom Lance. Yes, you've got the Disruptor right clicking this, but very, very hard to. Uh, get any kills. Disruptor is not a lane dominator. This is the, one of the reasons we have not seen Disruptor for so many months in the meta. Uh, oh, good deny. The wild axes will not connect to the main creep. Will be still mid. Thanks a few last hits. Bottom. Uh, the status quo seems to be that Jim Park and Prada have the advantage. Blood Grenade will come into front. Pull down the pursuit. Park will be happy with the two gauge. Arzen will miss quite a few hefty creeps there. Is getting pushed behind the mid. Tito is trading very, very low. Well, pop the uproar. Looking for right clear, dark model. Double bottle. Okay. The water rune at minute four is about to offset a lot of the damage that this is trading. Prada, low and low in HP. In part, not looking too heavy. The creeps are coming under tower. The ignite isn't gonna do anything. Oh, nice turnaround with the rays. And Jim Park is very confident as Demon One has completely TP. Does not have the snowball, but the shards will be more than enough to get the kill. No tag team, and they're trying to get a bit more, but no, not enough mana. Meanwhile, in mid, Osito. I believed he was gonna be safe and sound or play safe and sound until minute four water runes, but in the end, he gets punished by Dark Mago, who hasn't even used. The swashbuckle or the shield crash? Hello? How is that even possible? XYS getting nuked down by the Tusk and the Master in here, but we really have to talk about that misstep from Osito, who will come back in XP after collecting this wave and a half, but Punished um, pre minute five on a primal beast, which is usually a late dominator. Even if he doesn't dominate, he doesn't die because he's just so beefy and has that disengage in the form of the onslaught. Very, very tragic start from the stout team. Phantom Lesser, quite far from his level 4, but does have 15 one charges, so he will be fine for the Phantom out miss. Thank you, a bit of creeps, and now the tag team is gonna deal some damage, but no, the juxtapose, uh, sorry, the doppelganger. Oh, we can out the salve, but we'll get him back to full HP. Some more action. Top lane. Sito, again, down to below half HP, and I shouldn't be concerned, as we've got the Centaur. What are another reason for concern for South Team? Uh, is Masha with the right clicks not going to do enough to trade, because, like I said, this Ogre Magic is very, very beaky, but okay. Back, another anchor shot, and one more right click. I was wrong, yet again, thank you for proving me wrong. Strength of the Hoodwink will get the trade kill, but still, off lane for position 5. Favorable trade for E-Star backs. Grenade, ice shards, no onslaught. No. Okay, pulverize to create some space. And now, 
Drops will arrive, but not enough to help mana for Masha to do anything. And now the Snowball is going to come in towards Austin. They're trying to right him away. And now the Glimpse is going to be in the hands of the Hoodling. Dark Mago turns around, has the Arcane Wind, a Swashbuckle to get the kill. And what a beautiful play coming in from the trio of East Star backs. And now Masha is alone, despite having a Shield Rune. Uh, he will not die by any sort of imagination, but he will not be able to do much work. As uh, he is pressuring Dark Mago, uh, maybe even forcing this one to go back to base. But I think, yeah, I think Dark Mago will have to go back to base, actually. Quite recap, 800 gold going in the favor of Radiant. Looking at quick at the Maybe network we'll chart, the Shadow Fiend is doing very well. As I say that, he will not be doing very well uh, for about another 25 seconds as he will take a visit to the shopkeeper in base. Did they kill the stack? Oh, the ogre died. Sorry, I am so sorry, chat. I think the ogre magic was trying to get the experience, and in the end, I ended up not getting the XP, getting the experience. So you trade your life as a support. Minute seven, probably one of the most important uh, levels in the current uh, patch, as Osito gets uh, uh, slayed in the tier one tower. A nice try attempt to turn around. The one stick will pop, and now we have the disruptor as well. And now the task is gonna die. What I thought is gonna be an easy pick off with two heroes It's not going to be as it gets traded. Beautiful glimpse from Austin and uh, back to back to back kills. And this was a 4 1 advantage at one for, for E Star backs that gets offset to a 6 6 scoreline. Kill. 1000 gold. Oh, Jim Park. Uh, is there a Requiem of Souls? Spots Arzen. Does not connect with the first raise, only the second one. And Prada will not achieve too much more over here. The massive XP. Uh, victory, I believe, for the side of uh, Radiant. Getting the level 7 runes is going to get the Tusk close, closer to the Walrus Punch. And... Oscar? I believe he was might have been looking uh, to get a Helm of the Dominator creep, and then he got glimpsed by the Disruptor. But despite the last hit, considerable last hit lead that they have... Uh, Easter Bags gets got caught off many times in an unfortunate position, and now they're feeling forced to resort to right clicking the tower if they want to uh, keep up the network chart overall. Kills that are accelerating the farm of the support. We have the Primal Beast getting pursued yet again. Glimpse back for Dark Mago, but now the Snowball save is gonna connect. It's not gonna be a save, it's gonna be a reposition as Austin is doing so much work, buying time and denying the bounty rune in the process. Uh, saving his Shadow Fiend and, uh, sorry, saving his Primal Beast and uh, denying the Bounty Rune, great play coming from Austin. That's, that's one of the reasons why everybody loves playing Disruptor, picking Disruptor in the current meta. Phantom Lancer gets spotted up top and they have three opponents pursuing him, Beastman. Seems to be safe, has the Blade of Alacrity and uh, another 900 gold in the bank, building towards this Agony Scepter. A great build for the Phantom Lancer, hopefully he can get it pre-minute 16, even 15 would be a blessing in disguise. Down bottom, Arzen has to pop the ultimate, but will get caught by the Ice Shards, and nothing is gonna help him, despite the beautiful bushwhack played by Masha. Snowball punch to secure the kill, and um, yeah, that's gonna be a pretty much wasted stampede. Now up top, we've got the central beam uh, trying to chase the support, but now we've got the uproar gonna jump in. It's gonna be uproar versus roar, and the roar is coming out on top as we also have the pangolier roar gonna come in lower and lower. Masha, can you survive with the hoodwink? A nice placement of the bushwhack, and still be a one for one as Dark Mago uses the swashbuckle to trade. Now, Fosito, oh. Gonna be a bit of a miscommunication as the glimpse is coming in midway through the pulverize. That's not gonna be the full effect of the ultimate. And now, even a courier going for Dark Mago. And he's a very beefy boy. Can't afford to buy the defusal, especially. Um, but doesn't have it quite yet. XYS gets connected. They're trying to kill the centaur. Prada is there to assist him. And so is Demon. And it's a fight left, right, and center. Now they're diving the tier 1 tower. And now the Phantom Lancer. Nice juke. The snowball will not connect. And now we have another doppelganger. And Osito clearing the creep wave. 
Ice Black Hole again to deal some more damage. Ice Shards to isolate the Primal Beast now. Static Field to separate the team fight. Ignite gonna come in and Swashbuckle is gonna only partially connect. The Breeze Master is back into play. This has been such a long uh, exchange of abilities and I think in the end Team Sal will give up on the tier 1 up top. Centaur down bottom is trying to farm, find any farm as he doesn't even have uh, base boots. will complete them and fly them in now. Four thousand gold lead for E Star backs. One kill advance, and we can see the power of the Shadow Fiend. I'm almost Shadow Fiend. Pangolier. That's the hero. Hoodung is being on the dire side. By this four K gold lead, this is the first time in a few good minutes where Dota Plus believes in E Star backs. Those far favoring South team. But look at the TP. Austin full confidence going to TP in. There's no BKB. It's too early in the game. And we have an uproar, but it's going to be followed by a kinetic field. The glimpse is going to come in just in time with a static storm. And this shadow feed somehow still survives. And now the Requiem is going to come in time. Yes, it is. Pangolier also going to roll. Has an amplified damage rune. D Stampede does not do anything. And I think the central might have TP to his death. Austin will die. The right click from Dark Mago. That's going to be a double kill. Please don't dive even more. No. Be patient. And their sights on some objectives. Room of this tier to mid. Phantom Lancer still needs another 1200 gold to have his point booster for the Agonims. Tier 2 in mid will fall. Masha? Ooh, barely. Gets away from the Ice Shard, but catching him does not use the Scurry at all. Tries to do more and more damage to help his arm accelerate, but uh, they are very, very poor on the side of Team South. Minute 14 will be key. They need to get at least one of the XP runes, ideally even two if they can make their way to steal one. Sito has face boots and single chainmail, the poorest of cores. The difference between him and uh, the uh, opponent offlaner is twice the, the difference between him and the opponent position four as this tusk will have his bling dagger in probably about a minute and a half at worst austin in 100 gold in the bank i'd be looking to purchase his shard or go for a bling dagger need to try to counter initiate on this master almost wow we'll have the helm of the overlord a second when the courier will fly to him shadow fiend dragon lance and is looking to be the sanjin yasha jim park having a hell of a time 142 last hits for shadow fiend did 14. Ogre Magi gonna build towards the mech, and this is something that I've seen is key towards uh, obtaining victory in tier 2 Dota, which is building auras. And obviously, we're now gonna have the aura from the big, bad, ancient granite golem who will grant a 60% bonus HP. Um, we then have the mech that will happen, well, it will arrive at some point for the Ogre Magi. Uh, we do have the aura for the presence of the Dark Lord, which is not empowering your team, but obviously the armor of the opponents whereas for the side of um, team south we've got a helm of iron will that's not going to even complete the discord i don't believe it's, uh, we need a blink dagger on this centaur before it's too late if it's not already uh we'll have a four staff on the hoodwink and uh oh there's a shard yeah and okay the shard not an aura for austin but a key item for the disruptor Top tower, Dota Plus gives the team E Star backs 64% as we start collecting. It heal Lotus. Uh, Demon has his blink flying in, and um, I'm just saying we have yet to see the impact of the Inner Beast plus the uh, uh, Bloodlust for on the Shadow Fin because uh, Oscar went for a different build. Came around. Uh, doesn't even want to rush the Agonims as we saw. Uh, that's the duty the other day. 
but yeah, this Roshan will make minute 16, which is absolutely incredible. We usually talk about minutes 18, 17 Roshans that it's gonna grant you a cheese. Uh, second and third Roshans will grant you cheese, but this time not so sure. If we get a really quick timer, this could also be a pre-minute 25 second Roshan. But I'm talking about minute 25 when uh, South will be happy if they can hold on to this game until minute 20 because Battlefield will start hitting and look at this. He's got an attack speed of uh, 361.47 per second pre-inner aura. And another tier 2 will melt. Tier 1, bottom fallen and a blink dagger completed on Arson. So will is the Agony Scepter. But finally, some of the big items. Another big item. Some of the necessary items for Team South making their way here. Uh, including a four staff for Masha. Don't look now, but Radiant Primal Beast has his blade mill and a region rune in the bottle. But the full four minutes on the ages for the Shadow Fiend. Oh, we have a pulverize jumping in, and the Beastmaster is gonna roar before he dies. The Static Storm trying to isolate the fight, but now we have Demon jumping in the backline onto Austin. Now Dark Mago gets deterred by the Ice Shards and will have to turn around, and it's gonna be an offlane for offlane. But this feels so much spell, so many spells used by Team South. Roll also was used by Eastar Bax, and the Beastmaster Roar has used. We only have the Requiem of Souls, and Eastar Bax are they gonna be deterred? And now we have the Ice Shards, and this roll into. Four step for Masha! Somehow still alive! What just happened? I think it was the disruptor. Now we get the glimpse. Gonna get back the uh, task and he's gonna lose his life. What a misstep happening right there. Team South managing to hold on to this by getting a couple of pickoffs and keeping themselves into this game for a bit longer. Like I said, East our backs, they do not have the late game to go very, very late into this game. Parker is Jim Park, my friends. Jim Park is the Shadow Fiend. Parker. Bounties picked up for the Shadow Fiend, who already has another item flying his way. Uh, it's a full Hurricane Pike. Okay. Be very dangerous as we have Masha trying to reposition himself using the sharpshooter in the end will lose his life to Jim Park. Support kill, not that bad of a uh, true deal. Uh, Team South more than happy if you can keep this Phantom Lancer alive. He has yet to die. Two kills and a single assist, level 12. Uh, getting in more and more work. The juxtapose now uh, way stronger when he hits that level 12. And uh, we'll have the Diffusal Bait potentially uh, for the next team fight. Which is going to be very important, but the next team fight is going to have to be in two minutes or so, as uh, I assume Jim Park wants to go in with his Age of Steel online. Level 15 for the Shadow Fiend. Dark Mago. 700 gold away from having his Agony Scepter. Jim Park starts right clicking away and the tier 3 fortify has been used. We need to find a way of jumping in, but the centaur is not TPing, the primal beast is not TPing. Are they just gonna give away the tier 3 tower? For Shrek to slow this down, but another 90 seconds on the ages and the mech coming in for the ogre alongside the giant granite golem and the tier 3 will fall. Now we still have one more fortify, but not TPing. They're fortifying, they're trying to trade the tier 2 top. We need... Okay, the Phantom Lancer left the base to go farm. They just gave up the racks. Team South, with an audible call, giving up the racks at minute 20. Because they feel like they need more farm, they can't fight into the Shadow Fiend. And yes, the backdoor protection will come in, but way too late. The damage will be sufficient. And E-Star backs with a 20 minute, 20 second set of bottom racks and now we'll also steal the tormentor very crucial for the support uh, of uh, their own side it's gonna be demon uh okay arguably the ice shards agonim shard upgrade is one of the weakest in the game but hey as long as you steal it from your opponents that's great great and now we have a smoke they might have spotted the shadow fiend tping if you can start a fight while jim park is not here this is might be what we're looking for let's see central war runner 
Can he get a great jump in? They are still there. They're being scanned. And now we have the double hoof stomp. That'll be a perfect stun into the bushwhack. And now the prime will be static storm. The dark mago pangalier just dies and Prada will fall soon. Can we get anybody else? No. Beastmaster will TP back to base. Finally. Some signs of life from E Star. They saw that Shadowfiend TP, I believe, because of uh, this observer word, and they realized they have the numeric advantage. The big bad boss of the server is not going to be there, so let's try to catch someone off guard. And they did. Dark Mago, second most farm hero on the Radiant side, will get picked off. But sadly, for Team South, he did manage to pick up a his Aghanim Scepter before losing his life. Uh, meanwhile, in the Radiant top side, we will get another Tormentor being collected, and that's going to be a big one. It's going to be the uh, Shard for Oscar's Beastmaster. Uh, that means he will have a uh, double Hawk uh, and a slight less cooldown, which is going to be really, really good as he's now also building towards his Aghanim Scepter, and Oscar is going to have an absolute oppressive presence in the upcoming team fights uh, once he gets his gets his agonyms up. Uh, let's see what items are we looking at next. Okay, XYS had his uh, diffuse zone for that team fight. I think that's what they were waiting for. And we also have a Yasha, I believe, in under gold completed. Primal Beast building towards his big game. As uh, a veil of discord towards his sheep. Up top we've got Austin. Well we had Austin. Because Austin is no more. Gets caught off by Demon, Jim Park and Prada. And uh, I'm gonna start hitting this. And oh, okay, Jim Park will get bushwhacked, but he's 15, 14, 1200 gold away from getting his satanic. And now they're just right clicking away. No disruption for 15 seconds. This tower will melt. We have no more fortifies. The Rage Rat is not gonna be long for the world. 10 seconds. I think they have what it takes to get it. Five seconds. Do they want to stick for this? Do you want to get great, greedy? And I think they, they don't even have greedy. The disrupt is not even back. The second racks just melts. And that's what happens when you give up the first set of racks. The second will follow suit as well. Austin spots one. Doesn't use the glimpse in time. Oh, actually, it's going to give Oscar more time. Or Bushwhack, Sharpshooter, and Static Storm for separation. This master still alive, but not for longer. And now Arzin jumps in with a stun. Turn around. Going to come in from Osito. But despite the BKB, he's just getting right clicked. Maybe not, the Shadow Fiend gets bursted down, and now XYS starts doing some damage, the Glimpse is gonna get the Ogre Magic kill, and now it's gonna be a 4 for none as Dark Magu tries to just run away. And he will be safe. 5,300 Gold Swing for Team South. Phantom Style will be coming soon for this Phantom Lancer, still the fourth uh, most farmed hero on the server, and they're getting the teamfight victories! Now, one kill advance in front of E-Star backs, but they've lost. Up and bottom. Is this the correct choice? Can they hold Mega Creeps? At this point, Shadowfin could probably just replicate what he did. Trade your life, trade your team's life for Mega Creeps. Is, is I think it's just slightly too early to be looking down that uh, uh, gun barrel, but... South seem to be quite confident with their game plan, and I respect that. They have a game plan, they're sticking to it. Let's see if in the end it's going to pay off or they punished by this. Uh, 500 gold away for Arzen's Sheep's Guard. That's going to be very good for Team Fight. Down a bit of this Steve Shadow Fiend, who now will be able to purchase his Satanic for the next. That will disassemble the Mask of Madness and get uh, the Reaver. Dark Mago. We haven't really seen the Axe since he purchased it. Last team fight was a bit weird as his team got blown up and he had to run away. Also have a Glimmer Cape now for Prada to try to protect his team. We will have Scepter for Demon. Building towards a BKB on the Tusk. Very interesting. Uh, Arcane Rune in the hands of um, Ito. And I love this from Austin. Austin will try build towards his agony he's not that far that team fight i believe he was alive for it only three four and ten for the disruptor so not that many deaths if he can stay alive for another 1400 gold and get his agonims i might see a way of team south completely obliterating every single team fight for a reminder of this game Or 
Our players are here. Champion will come in globally from across the map. Big jump, done. Bump, but Ada's gonna show himself and Masha does spot it, does not want to go in straight away. Dark Mago gonna jump into the backline, he's gonna bring the smoke of everybody on the dire side. Well, gonna miss with the swash buckle, but does spot Osito. Being very patient, both teams have, are aware of each other's positioning, but look at Jim Park doing what I said, just trying to get another set of racks and will force the fortify. This could be very damaging for a couple of moments if he wants to do this again. Masha. Vivir. Gonna help them clear some of the land to start. Purchase. He's his level 12. Really, really big. Um, not just damage, but it helps you when it comes to cooldown. 10 second cooldown reduced level 12. If we have two team fights back to back, we saw how long drag some of these can be. Our backs do with a little victory. They have managed to force the fortify. Now they're gonna go back. Jim waiting for the Roshan up top. Second Roshan minute 26. Quite, quite a tough position for the side of East Star backs to go into the Roshan pit when you're playing versus a primal beast. Hoodwing was elusive and obviously the Disruptor, but see them. They are uh, the Tusk demon. Need to spot scout it. Not gonna see anyone there, but Team South is all way. That's. They're gonna separate him. They spark Dark Mago, and it's gonna be Eucladian who's gonna get it perfectly in the static storm. And that's gonna be a two for Nana's Demon One jumps in the back line, just trading, giving his life away for free. Dark Mago will force the buyback, and now we have the Shadow Fiend. Arc coming half west. Answer illusion. It's gonna be the perfect bait. No bling dagger for the Beastmaster. A while dark mago here and now we're gonna be looking at a requiem of soul flying in and now we're gonna start right clicking away the central war runner and central is gonna die there's a roar on top of him the stun will not come in time and now the rolling thunder dark mago doing lots of good job and austin does not have any escape as he will lose his life with the double kill from team park but now xys is back in the play and the agonims and we have the claim you connects the beastmaster melts so does the pangolier he's gonna be jim park alone in a one versus three and he's gonna get bursted by this phantom lancer hoodwink primal beast connection essentially a team wipe including a dieback for the pangolier and for the first time in the longest time team south are about to take the net worth lead in this game one See the win probability slowly dwindling from 60% to 56 and 55 as the effects of the golden XP swing are coming through. Second Roshan will go to his team south and this Phantom Lancer, one of the better carries of an Aegis in the game, will have his level 19 as well, almost level 20. And that's what I said. I took team south as a prediction in this game number one because they are the ones running the least number of unplayed heroes. And now we have a nice, nice attempt from Demon. Demon gonna uh, TP in, blink, snowball, and sacrifice himself in what could have been a stunning play. In the end, it will not be mad. Yes, XYS is now unstoppable. 6 0 and 8. And we have a stampede spotting the hood, trying to save it or Hoodwink in mid, but Hoodwink's gonna die. And not just that, but that's gonna be a gem going towards Prada. And hey, it's a one for one support, but that is a very costly one for the gem. Um, stolen from the grasp of Team South. Disruptor, Aghanim, Scepter, and if the team previous many team fights were rough for the side of the Star backs, I don't even want to think about how much they're gonna struggle now facing the Austin Aghanims. Oh. Nope, no smoke up. Sorry, that was just an invis, I believe. Um, what is the next item? Oh, it's it's gonna be a disperser for well. Building towards a disperser for this Phantom Lancer, who's also gonna almost have level 20. Shadow Fiend. Purchase the Shadow Blades. Intro to the name. 
to position himself where we have now have a small need to get to action yeah. they are top of these team fights but still the network lead is slipping from their hands yet again we now have arson jumping up front breaking the smoke and spotting the pangolier but who's spotting who Centaur cannot be alone, and everybody is aware that the Ninja gonna come in from Masha. And now XYS will try to get the PD kill of the dragon, and this dragon, oh my goodness, gets Eve inhibited. Yes, that's the correct one. Inhibited. Acted. Our backs they have to real. They, they do realize they don't need to engage with these. They are up double set of raxes and always got a centaur popping the stampede and spotting prada who is trying to maybe steal something down bottom arzen gonna start right clicking him away now the teammates will come just in time as prada that was a very long tp maybe he tried to tp to tier two or tier three finally after uh, half an hour we're gonna have first tormentor taken by teams Never mind! They don't want to take the torments, we're just gonna go back to farming. Pretty big uh, gold thing for. No, 800 gold. And it's Oscar. Something that I completely forgot to mention. He got deterred from his Aghanims, who had. was felt forced to go purchase his BKB. Nine second BKB. Hasn't used it yet. And now we'll finally go for towards his Aghanims. And. I don't know how I feel about it. Um. His PKB pre Disruptor Axe was correct as a choice, but he didn't have the chance to use it because he just got bursted down very early on. From some great back to back utility usage, as in the middle of top, we get Static Storm connected field will not connect. We have a glimpse. Human one's hiding in the fog, bait out the time of the connected field, and now the glimpse will come in just a second too late, but Masha's gonna miss. Ooh. Bushwhack gonna miss, and now Sharpshooter connects. We have the stun Arzen in time with the. Beautiful jump into that blink dagger and a hoof stomp to collect the kill. Masha blocking himself in the creep in the trees for just a split second. Um, as I was saying, this agonims I believe would have been slightly much better early on um, in team fights from Oscar. That's why I thought he was gonna get it. He was queuing it for the longest time. Got the PKB, but you, if you don't pop the PKB, you just have four thousand extra network that you're not using, and sadly. Oscar didn't manage to use it, and he, he's itemizing fine, but he's also won 5 and 6, despite being in the top 3 network for the majority of this game as a Beastmaster. Phantom Lancer, another 1000 gold away from having his Disperser. This Primal Beast has his Heart of Tarask coming his way. Uh, only a casual Plate Mail. Good choice. I, I mean, I can respect that choice. I mean, oh, look at Austin. This disruptor is gonna be building towards a blink dagger. And if 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 Austin ever gets the blink dagger, I'm gonna call. Thank you for compliment. Writing me, buddy, in the chat. Masha has a crystalline on top of the glaive near four step. It is building. I am Scotty for the hoodwink. This Hoodwink is level 20, higher level than <laughs> the Primal Beast. And not only that, higher level than Oscar on the Beastmaster and Dark Mago on the Pangolier. This is a uh, kind of, Sorry, no. Wait, what? I got bamboozled, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. He's only level 18. Still very high. And still higher than Oscar. Everything else I said you can just ignore. As we spotting Demon. And Osito's gonna grab him in a second. Blink Dagger. Oh. Okay. We had the onslaught getting cancelled instantly, but now we have another catch, I believe, and it's gonna be Dark Mago of all players getting caught by this beautiful centaur jump in. And now, Demon One, you don't have the luxury of a bling. The soul will gonna come in in time, but you are gonna get static stormed and kinetic to the ground. Osito doesn't even want to pulverize it, will do so in the end. Up and down we go. Walrus Punch to buy himself more time, and now Aishar's trying to isolate, but no. It's not gonna be the case, and I believe the depth of the ice shards was the detriment to the tusk. Um, shards normally are this wide, and I think he might have been able to separate himself. In the end, he would have died because he was revealed by the thunderstorm. But still, we please can we get a uh, tusk? Aghanim Shard rework. Ice Frog, I beg of you. If you follow EPL World America series, especially this matchup, 
Tusk Shard rework. Thank you very much. 27 to 18 scoreline. We've only had a single kill go in the favor of East Starbacks in what feels like the longest period of time. Uh, the last kill they got was about eight minutes ago, maybe seven minutes ago. They've had really, really quiet 10 minutes for the side of East Starbacks. Somehow, somehow they're still. Okay, I was about to say they still have the top network hero, but that literally just changed as um, I believe someone passed XYS the cheese, which uh, obviously is quite valuable as an item. So it will increase his net worth, popping the net worth chart, followed by the three cores of E star backs. Got drawings of the map. Centroids, Arzen, thinking towards uh, wanting to go and get a pick off by the, by the Star Fuggle. Got us smoked up next to Jim Park. The Guardian Greed's completing on the Ogre Magi. Right? Now we have to jump in. Who's up in who? Now Arsene gonna jump in, but he gotta get caught. And now the Requiem of Souls gonna come in just in time. But the separation in the team fight is now going in the favor. And now we have a Static Storm that doesn't connect onto anyone. And now the Roar on the backline. And the Aghanim's drum's gonna destroy the Disruptor. Followed by Arsene into the graveyard. Dark Mago jumping in with the Rolling Thunder. And this Hoodwing does not have a way of disengaging. Will die to the right clicks and the Ignite damage from the Ogre Magi. Now Swashbuckle gonna get Osito lower and lower. And one more right click. And it's a four. But none, as XYS wasn't even present, and this is crucial. We've got no buybacks on the Centaur, no buybacks on the Hoodwink. And we've got no racks up top and bottom, and the million racks just melts. Final fortify. Primal Beast did for buyback, and now we've got XYS in the back, like, trying to deal some damage, get Walrus Punch, and now he's alone in the 1 versus 5. What are you doing? You don't have a buyback. He does have a shard, but he does get right click and spotted, and dead, and that is the end. No more Phantom Lasser, no Centaur, 20 seconds, no Static Storm, and I think it is GG. I am stunned. He star backs manage to keep themselves in this game for long enough despite what were some dreadful 15 minutes from their side their early racks advantage and just a little misstep from south team in the final team fight allow easter backs to get nap number one and i'm gonna be completely honest if i'm team south i'm kicking myself because i played a really good mid game i ended up just feeling slightly too overconfident when I had no buybacks on the important cores and no or raxes. Taking a look at the scoreboard, 6-1 and 8 for um, the Phantom Lancer. XYS had a really good game despite playing a hero that nobody else is in the current meta. Um, similarly to Jim Park, Shadow Fiend coming up victorious, 7-3 and 7. Um, we talked about the Beastmaster, one of these heroes that he did a lot of things well, but was shut down quite early. In the end, we saw him uh, only after a single Static Storm was missed by Austin. Um, Beastmaster jumped in the back line, separated the fights, Roar, using the Agony, the birds, the drums to kill him. Very back and forth game. As you can see from the graphs, very back and forth in but that will be the end of game number one ladies and gentlemen we're gonna send it to a short break but when we're back it's gonna be more action they really BBL gotta get out America's ori is coming panic. baby there's get the out. blink forward they find seb looking now for bzm he's gonna get the blink off onto the high ground trying to just channel through the gate the stomp it makes oh it in God. time oh you got a bkb tp now son oh he has he no tp have. he's going through the gate he has no choice dude he's so dead Oh, this is a disaster for OG. He does not. He bought out the eggs. And now they're going to find Drought. Oh, this is it. That's got to be game. It oh, has to be, right? The spell amp right there, dude. The team's turning around. They're like, they might be making a play for the Medusa here. 
Whisper's got a blink, goes in, goes for the Pulverize. The Silenced comes out from BZM. It's going to be a nice initiation on the backside from FY to break this one up. Stone Gaze is here, Onslaught on through. Whisper trying to just stay on top of low. And BZM, with this Exorcism, should be able to finish the job. Chrono comes out to grab the Crystal Maiden as well. Low's going to fall. Double kill for BZM. Ori with the Rolling Thunder now has to use it to get away. And Whisper, he's going to come off a beautiful silence from BZM. They need the bashes. Can they chase him down? Squash buckles away. The Exorcism, it's still going. Whisper just continues to run through. Then they're turning attention on over to Bok. Timber chains back on through to the other side. Do they have the catch? Blink pulverize in one. The bashes. They take down Bok. FY, great avalanche. Great toss. Tries to finish off. Sebi gets him with a tower shot. Whisper is really far forward. Gets the blink pulverize here. Finds low. Great avalanche response. Here comes the drums. Here comes the boys. He is in a lot of danger. But Tomato takes a huge damage out from that, uh, I mean, Mystic Snake. And now a little bit of an interesting cancel on that freezing field. Maybe thinking he was going to back away. And now low. Oh, a stolen freezing field from Ari. Just dumping the damage back in. FY, the avalanche, the toss. Tomato going for a very deep dive. He bursts him down. The Bash Lord himself gets the kill. Whisper back in, chasing FY. This is an insane dive, and it somehow works. Ari doesn't die. You only lose the Aegis. They're smoking to try and come make this uh, fight happen, but it is dead so fast. And you're gonna have Exo for the fight now. Whisper in a decent spot to break the smoke. They're gonna Timber Chain on in. Whisper, he jumps in aggressive with the BKB, gets the Pulverize here onto the Medusa. The Telekin actually doesn't have a Manta either quite yet. Silenced up, chain stun down. Can they burn her man on time? No, she gets the Stone Gaze. That is big. Now on the run is going to be the Crystal Maiden, but she's not going to be able to make it out for now. And Lowe's out of all his resources. Silenced up. Brought down. No problem at all. On the other side of the fight, Whispers scouted Bach here. Great telekinesis to cancel the Timber Chain away. Bach's going to need some help. Onslaught to interrupt the next one. How many times can they get away with this? The silence is there, but he finally just TPs home instead. Beautifully done. Tomato trying to chase for FY is not going to find him. Well, that being or said, Willie. Whisper might. Great onslaught into the Pulverize. They are all over the map here on OG. Three huge kills. I mean, between the Alpha Wolf, his Vlad's aura, and the attack speed aura, like the amount of damage he just enables his team is ridiculous. They've caught Bach Three on the backside. Bash into Bash into Bash. They've also managed to isolate the Medusa. Bach, he's just dead. What are those Bashes? The Chrono, is he going to use it? He's going to just BKB. A nice ult here from low, making space. They've managed to find the Pango. Whisper going to try and chase and isolate this hero. Silenced up by the Death Prophet. He's got a refresher. There's your Chrono Spear catching the Tiny. He gets all three actually onto the high ground. They go. Another set of Pulverizes. Just going to isolate low. Oh my goodness. Goodness. All right. Lane is. I mean, I feel like this is kind of been what we've been seeing in a lot of these games. However, Elder Titan is bottom with an Astral Spirit, looking to maybe dive Tomato here. Fy comes in, gets the stun, the plasma field, all that magic resistance, just burned away from the natural order. And just like that, they get themselves first blood here for Tian Ming. TP in from the Zeus. Wants to help find a return kill. Blood Grenade is out. Gets himself a nice pickoff. Heavenly Jump interrupted there. As now Bach will help chase down Ari. It's a double kill as a three for one. Whoever I'm made, made that change was Herald, though. Okay, get two ice Alec. They're going to try and initiate onto the Pudge with the Scepter, and nice it's not an easy target to be able to blow up. Meanwhile, Noob on the back on as well, disrupting the supports, but he's going to run into Ori's damage. They need to get onto the sniper. Ori is currently freely right clicking on the low ground, and without a response, this would be a free fight for Azure, and we see that be the case currently. Malik's going to be holding to place with the root, and tier 2000 just We're does not TA. see an angle to enter. Low's well, not there. Let's no see. Luna. Maybe an opportunity smoke. Ori? Should have at the vision. Instant BKB from Ori. Bloodstone is going to charge in. They've been able to isolate Baboka, which is a lot of the control inside the middle of the team fight. Meanwhile, JT as well is trying to deal with the backline. They'll get the beam before the egg. Down goes the Phoenix, but with the BKB expiring for Mori, he's gone as well. G2IG able to reset, but they will be able to drag back. Buck, Nick and timing with the X, able to catch up. Two nothing to say before the leap away. A heavy commitment though from Dyer. Is there going to be an opportunity for them to be able to finally have this first successful team fight? Even Ori's looking to rejoin as well. 
They need a way to protect JT. Maybe Provoke is going to be in with the combo, but it's not going to matter. Oh, Just the AoE off. damage. It's too much. It is Egg. too much. No BKBs. They're going to turn. They've got the attacks to be able to bring down the Egg. It is not a concern for Azure. Ori catches up. The Split Earth is there. It's a five man white. Multiple buybacks as well committed as well. And. Maybe able to catch Malik. Omar's in a really good position for the banish, but this is a fight they can look to take. But I mean, you gotta get Ori. Noob's gotta try and find him. But of course, he does have the Aegis, though. They're gonna toss him into the middle, but Mimo over to the right side. No one was there to protect Omar. And now Bark as well is gonna be able to leap over the top. They'll hold the Marana into place. Nope. He tried to deal with Ori, but it didn't matter in the end. And now Noob put himself in a compromised position. And they're gonna be able to bring him down on the outskirts of the T2 Tower. Yeah, they just tried fighting into an Aegis, so... Hard, hard, hard to fight like this. They need... Oh, T2000. He might be caught here. Are they Links. gonna be able to protect him, Omar? Is this a fight you want to take, though, on Radiant? Not easy once the sniper's currently set up. New nope. was trying to find an angle around, but he ran inside the lane, so the vision was out for low on the counter as well. Bark In the back. jumps in. Meanwhile, the right there, Malik. Oop. He got the sniper. FY though tries to protect it with the blast off. It's not enough. And now Tier 2000. It's his time to shine. But the BKB, they're lacking some stuns to enable the Morphling. Finally, he'll be able to blow up the disruptor. Another, Another hook, hook from Melik. Stops the TPR from Bark. And finally, we get a good fight out of the boys on PSG Quest. They're going to be able to purge off the instead. Melik can help close the distance onto the Centaur. Anyone else? And this is what they've been waiting <laughs> for. Doesn't it? Maybe low. Low still here. Missed the hook. <laughs> They're going on They want to jump Malik? Oman's going to be nearby to be able to protect him in over the, the right side. Low. In the back. But the Narcosar just ran into where they were set up. Low. Didn't respect PC Quest's formation. Respect now, the formation. Is this a fight you're going to be able to take, <laughs> Tian Ming? It's a pretty nice good static storm. storm. That's the scepter onto two, but the banishment from Omar. Vital seconds for tier 2000 to be able to activate the BKB once it expires Sniper's and now they've got gone. the back line. Snipe is gone. First life assassinated. And now they're going to be able to set up for the second. Arrow off the back of the respawn tier 2000. Finally, he's got enough damage. We saw some of the early fights. He was struggling, but that is not the case now. This PC quest will be able to come out on top. Back to back fights. And they have the net worth lead now in our first best of one. Not as scary as most uh, late game carries, but Sniper for me is maybe an X Factor. He could. Which is one of the reasons why I doubted Yeganim Skanda build. I wanted him sure. to just be an absolute beast. Is he looking to take the team fight first? Melly, can he find an angle for the hook? T2000 wants to go in. Oh, he won't be blitz. able to find the hook back. And now uh, it's just a freebie onto Bark and I mean, the rest maybe of Azure. The Kalis is hunting. I don't know if they're going to be able to get it, though. Lowe's actually going to send the illusions in. Noob's got Blink up in a couple of seconds. They're Malik. all sticking around. They want to go. They're set up for the Static Storm, and they need to find Omar. Omar Omar's already used to Banishment, so they're not going to be able to protect him inside the Static Storm now. And they are both just gone. Right from the face of the Earth. Now, Tier 2000. Let's see what the Morphling's going to be able to do. Doesn't seem like a whole lot for the moment. Ark's got Blink up in a couple of seconds. They feel the necessity to buy back to protect him, but... Glimpse him to the remnants of the T1 Tower. 2000 is not going to go out without a fight. Unfortunately, without the Satanic and the Chain Control being perfect, he will not have an opportunity to bring any other hero into the grave with him. What a good ult. They're going to be late again. And this time it's a third Roche. So an, an even more important Roche to, to try and contest. We saw what happened last time, though, even fighting to the Ages. They did come out successful. The smoke, it's going to pop FY. Noob's going to try and give them the information to jump in, but the Assassin's going to be able to cancel. I don't know this song. They're clumped up. They don't have the vision, though. Sentry needs to get laid down. Eyes on Omar, what he's going to be able to do. Disruption's going to be there to be able to protect at least one. G2000 tries to assassin Ori onto the back line as well. He's got the Aegis, so Ori's got a second life to work with. They had to expend a little bit, though. Those BKBs are now going to be off cooldown. Is it going to matter in the end? Ori tries to duck into the trees, wants to turn. Standing strong, T2000. Over towards Tian Ming, but it's just not enough. It is just not enough. The Zure, all they lose is the Ages. Three down without a buyback, and they can walk it down now. Nothing to say. Malik. 
Not a bad target, Money. He's even better. They're going to be able to catch a jar up to the front of the T2 tower, and the damage just comes in too quick. Now, the vessel was freshly completed from Baboka. So we're going to see them use it in turn onto Malik. And meanwhile, X Nova as well with the freezing field is kind of zoning the protective heroes away from helping Malik. And now the supports have stuck around for a little bit too long. They're going to be able to drag back the Hoodwink and a double kill for JT. Now, Noob still might Tier be able 2000? to assassinate Baboka. Tier 2000 is nearby as well. Once you the shackles, not able to latch onto the tree. And Baboka will be fine in the end. But G2IG, you lose the gyrocopter, but you find three kills afterwards they're gonna go beforehand though pc quest ready to fight I look to try and connect to Carlos, who's farming pretty aggressively inside dai's jungle and they've got a lord uh, sorry lane that's shoved out as well so if a successful team fight they'll be able to convert into a t2 they tower they will intercept a couple of heroes looking to try and make their oh, way gyro, gyro, gyro. they get a glimpse of one eight and with a jump over the top noob they should be able to bring him down with the help of the cold or damage money. Trying to do whatever he can, but without the BKB, it's not going to be enough. Still, split. this is a fight they might look to take. JT with a split. They'll turn to Melek. Nothing to say he's going to drop the combo. He got the catch onto the Wind Ranger. T2000 in some danger, and the Torrent Storm freshly completed. Noob's going to try and reset, but it will not be fast enough. The Hurling Boulder catches up to him. And now to Carlos, the sole survivor. But he will not be alive for too much longer. JT with the crits. You know, on this, on, on this slash. I'm not sure what kind, if he's an Yules enjoyer. I've seen him build it. He is a Yules enjoyer. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, JT again. once again. Tiamming to start, FY to follow. And yeah, this, man, is this is <laughs> what we're mentioning. This is like, this is what should happen every time a Timber is drafted first pick. He should have a horrific time every single moment they can possibly gank him. And now top lane Monade as well. He's getting ganked through the portal they go. Or in FY looking to get incredibly active. They've got the kisses if they need it, but they will not. Ori is pumping out some damage. Yeah, I remember the, the last time I was watching Mars Slardar and, and thinking, you know, like, hey, this guy's just not really a blink dagger first player, but feels like Echo Saber just isn't the same strength as it used to be. Uh, and yeah, he went the, the Orchid builds, and it's a pretty decent game for it here. Trying to slow him down. Turnaround, though. Disruption, and they've got the Purge. They can maybe kill the Viper from a There's distance here. Second yeah, game of easily. this group matchup between E-Star back in South team. It was a back and forth. It was a curious one. We got some picks that, granted, I, I liked seeing a bit of a flavor spice drafting phase and uh south team in the end with their phantom lancer did not manage to convert into a victory as east Backs used the shadow fiend to great great success and uh yeah uh, very similar to the beginning of game number one uh not as oh, oh, okay no actually it's the same bands east Backs taking out the sniper dead prophet and bloodseeker and three heroes that we don't often see banned in the first phase uh opposite of them south team will go for the more classic bands shadow demon Kanka. Tiny. And pick wise, we have Primal Beast and Pangolier identical to what we saw in that game number one. That makes me wonder do these two teams really love these heroes? I mean, both of them were fine in the first game. I think the Primal Beast had quite a low pickup point after he got his blade mail. It took him quite a long while to get hands on the second item. Pangolier is a Pangolier. Probably one of the most reliable pair of hands you can get in uh, Dota 2. To Way too long. Hashtag... Pang no, I, I'm kidding. I love Pangolier. Um, maybe... If a hero is picked non-stop despite 75 nerfs back to back to back... It might, it might be worthy of a rework. Hoodwink. Taken out by E-Star backs. Uh, rightfully so, I believe. Goodwing performance we saw for a South team was really, really strong. Dark Willow again, fifth by a ban from South team. No Disruptor ban yet. Gonna be a mistake. Uh, South team has the chance of getting it yet again. And I think they might just, they just might, no. Oh, oh, oh. they're gonna go for the Tusk Tusk this time around. Interesting. Leaving Disruptor in the pool. Disruptor's quite... Fight food versus Primal Beast and Tusk. Tusk also jumping in on the Disruptor. But yes, stealing the Tusk. First change up uh, in between the composition that we are seeing. 
for the second draft phase and Tau team really believed that the task was strong. The Blink Dagger was impactful and it's going to be responded with a Crystal Maiden. I love the Crystal Maiden. I think it's good. We see snaking from time to time. Falcons and they're one of the best, if not the best team in the world currently. Curious to see if East are back. Ten seconds, just long enough to use it. Every Same degrees of success. Five and uh, teams are rushing through the draft now. I think previously we had um, teams of time, reserve time. Right. This doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> I'll be honest. We got a crystal maiden. Um, she is one of the most reliable supports in the game, so you can pair her up with a lot of things. So what is going to be the choice of East or Backside? They're going to go for a support here. And they're taking the Disruptor. I mean, you can't let it through that much. And like I said, Primal Beast can jump in the backline and kill the Disruptor. But it's a so good right now. I'm surprised he made his way through the draft. And I, I really want to say this. If we somehow get to game number three, I think this than earlier might be wrong another hero that both teams have stayed away from which is really strong hero the chen granted e star backs have the beastmaster who went for the helm of the overlord to get the ancient chen is strong for many other reasons and south team will go back for the razor um highest win rate hero in uh tier one dota if you want to say Again, similar reasons as the Crystal Maiden. It's played a lot by Falcons. Both the Mar and Maureen played for them, so he's an all around strong hero. I would even argue it's slightly overpowered. It was played yesterday as well in the Leviathan game. They ran the Razor and won with it. We sometimes see Disruptor and Razor paired together. Or next time, they will be in opposite teams and Razor. Can get games back, but he also can burst Dire this Disruptor and Crystal Maiden very, very easily. Pain! Okay, these two teams have spoken to each other. They want to definitely run a lot of heroes that nobody else is playing. And it's another one. It's the Bane Elemental making his way in the draft. Uh, quite a good counter to the Pangolier, I have to say. We don't see it that often, but when we do see it, it sometimes can oppress this Pangolier, throwing the Fiend's Grip to just completely lock down the target, and we don't really have reliable stuns. Yeah, okay, the Static Storm can stop you, and the Glimpse back, oh, wow. Wow. Poor Fling. He loves not having reliable long-term stuns, and yes, the Bane has a few, but... Ten seconds. Radiant gets Done. Banned. Or he can stop the. More than anything, this morphing is great because a turn into either a primal beast or tusk for reposition or disengage or chasing. But the key counter pick, morphing turning into a razor and linking someone else. Plus the plasma field is just a nice thing. Have has a. Five seconds. Oh, love this morphing pick. For our backs and they didn't even hesitate they kind of went straight for it after they saw the razor in uh fix beastmaster will get taken out this time around by south team and doom great counter to the morphling great angolier will be taken out from the draft from our backs 10 seconds i'm quite intrigued about this uh, i love seeing the prospect of a morphling on the server quite dire gets the ban Afraid for him because uh, Orkin Malevolence is one of the items that has last two, three weeks. Never used Orkin. South team could go even random then build an under. Ten seconds. Prize before. Centaur will Five be banned seconds. by South team. They ran it themselves. They don't want to give it to E Star as. Great way of disengaging from all this uh, catch from the side of South team. Throw your ultimate away to stampede uh, outside of the team fight. Break the link. Obviously, factor that central grant them. Now he starts taking a bit of reserve time to think about their final ban and first and final pick. Similar situations, but this time they find themselves on the dire side. 
Overall last pick for South Dyer team. Pick. Five Steeler coming out. What is gonna be the final puzzle piece here? Star back. Need probably an off lane. Radiant top. Gonna find it's gonna be the brew master, a different type of master, not the beast, but a brew. Great, great brew master. Jumps in the back line, throws tornado in the air to just isolate the ranger out of the team fight and just hits the BKB. You can do the same with either of the supports. Chase around, you can see the team fight. You can Five seconds. have a bit more burst. Cinder brew is a great, uh, great ability, especially during the laning phase. And the Brewmaster has seen quite a resurgence as well over the last few weeks. So I'm glad to see it today. I love the picks individually from E-Star backs. Do they work so well together? Uh, no, 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 we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. The South team, are they going to go back for something crazy again? Or are they going to get some slightly more staple? Weaver still in the pool. Not that much lockdown on the side of E-Star backs other than the potential... Disruptor Static Storm. Weaver does this. This is not a bad Weaver game, I don't think, for the Radiant. Got a Tusk for a bit of save if needed. Our teams have played the Weaver. Not in EPL, but he is a really good carry in for meta. Seconds left of reserve time. Which still in. Not the best. So, with the Razor Eye of the Storm. Plenty of options in case they want to get a position unraiser or something else. Seconds. Like playing Templar Assassin. I don't think it's a good direct choice here for South Team. Ranger was banned last game, still in the pool. Two to seconds. Game of Dota. You choose your hero. Yeah, position one. Razor. Wow. I'm uh, surprised, to say the least. Similar thought process behind the Enigma, I believe, as in the Weaver. There's not that much stun. But this tells me that whatever you do, if you want to use the Black Hole as an Enigma, get the Disruptor. And now you're very reliable in two very long cooldown ultimates that are both channeled in the form of the Fiend's Grip of and the Black Hole. Very Ten seconds. questionable draft coming in from South Team. Uh, all Enigma has been played a bit seconds. lately, and it's been seeing more and more play as a support, though. Uh, very little support as an off lane. I think that's for a good reason, but maybe Arzen is a specialist. Who am I to tell a specialist what to run? He's got a set that looks like the entire Milky Way, or actually the entire universe. Let me just find out. Enigma's current win rate in Immortal Pops is 51%. But for the most part, it is being played as. Oh, that's I'm actually wrong. Quite a fair bit of Enigma offlane. I'm, I'm I would love to see this Enigma work out. A lot of pro players have run it run it lately. Various degrees of success. So Arzen might have just been cooking something. Versus this lineup of E Star backs, ladies and gentlemen, please go in the chat and let me know what you think about the draft of these two teams. And if you believe our team can take us to a game number three. Now, let's run to the players quickly. We got Dark Mago back on the Pangalier, Prada on the Crystal Maiden, Demon on the position, Five Disruptor, Jim Park on the Morphling. And yeah, we do. Sorry, I'm gonna. <laughs> Put that on hold for just a second as we get the fifth and final pick. Uh, Oscar will be the offlane crew master. Last but not least, we just had the pleasure of seeing uh, Arzen is a grandmaster enigma. So they're going for comfort picks. I love to see this from their side. All right, get ready. ready, steady. We're getting underway, but so is Jim Park on this poor thing. Goodness me. It's going to be the battle of the biggest bosses around. As we are completely on the way to this. Our team smoked up. They want to have an early lead. They get a first blood. Some sort of rewarding gonna bring.
Pasha. Ja, auch ein Triangle bei Luca. Bei den Dark Mago. Los dann. Cards. Beautiful. Crash over the shards. Backline, Arzen. Not what you want to see. Jim Park will collect the last hit and Enigma will fall in the favor of E-Star backs. Let's see, are we at least gonna trade the rooms? They've got an ancient, and between you and me, they got no business. Mark, I'm not gonna get it. An ancient, and it's get gonna be oh, one for demon. First go. Misha will take it. It's gonna be a two for two. Great, but Oscar, so confident. Bullying XYS with that Cinder Brew, and that's what it said. Very strong spell. Oh, by 25, 4%. Wow. Body blocking the crap. Really want to advantage in bottom lane, but it's. Yes, we don't often see this type of play happening, and now we have the plasma field gonna come in. Now, Austin with a blood grid, and it's gonna be right clicking away. It has a brain, brain stab available. Demon one, <gasps> the slow from the thunder strike. Austin, which is maybe slightly too greedy, and now will pop the brain stab onto the brewmaster. That disruptor would have gone down to below 50 HP. Plasma field off cooldown, though. Demon trying to hide himself in the river. Jim Park, quite low in HP, obviously. He can attribute shift constantly. Should be fine for the most part. Maybe got caught by surprise by the overwhelming damage from the Eidolons plus the Ice Shard. Good Crystal Nova. Match from what we saw in game number one. Dark Mago even managed to solo kill Ito once. And this time, Osito seems to have learned his lesson in doing during the last in the department. <laughs> no wand just yet, no stick either on Demon. All of these dead is uh, nukes coming in from Austin and XYS are gonna get a get wrap over. Park down. Full agility. Try to heal himself up with this Enigma. Very good. Pressure on the morph and pause. Angle years. Only the 10 of Osito. But, not get fooled by it, ladies and gentlemen. Just have three more creeps. Will be a second. So essentially, if he gets every single last hit, they will. Water rune for Dark Mago in bottom. Full burst water rune for Pop Reaver. What is the build we're looking for? For XYS. Seems to want to go for a classic Power Threads Blade build, which is going to give him a bit of mana regen, going to give him damage early on overall not the worst item he can get um i was thinking he might be going for a bit more crit or more farm oriented later on but we talked about easter backs being on a primer last match when they ran the shadow fiend and similarly team south is on an even bigger timer we have him versus a morphling paired up with a master and pangolier. Especially if we see another disruptor being tags. Don't often see disruptor with agonims in matches. Last game was a very unfortunate scenario for the side of Team South. Because uh, Austin in the end wasn't able to make it work. He got very early on. I really want to see this Enigma. Uh, Lasting performance. I wanted some great black holes. I would love to see Enigma make his way back to competitive Dota 2 play at the highest level, even in offlane. 
Why not casting black holes are come is, is a joy, has always been a joy. Bit of a longer pause. We don't believe I don't believe we have any reasons in the chat just yet. Both teams taking their time. Decide what they want to do. What do they want to do? Well, I don't think that's what they're doing. I think it's probably a technical difficulty, and I hope it's not going to be anything too harsh or too severe. Crystal Maiden, one point in Frostbite, one in Crystal Alpha, Corruptor, only level one for now. Oh, yeah, his level. Oscar wants to build an, an Urn of Shadows. We did see some uh, brewmasters going for straight radiance into Boots of Speed. So I'm, I'm going to be quite curious to see what the. What the Next steps will be for Oscar, as he will farm uh, throughout the mid and late game portions of the game. Hide himself in the river. Jim Park, quite low in HP, I would say. He can attribute to it constantly. Should be fine for the most part. Their sweet time, they are... Do you go for a first blink dagger enigma if it's an offlane? No, he seems to want to go for the Vladimir's build or a build very, very expected. And I believe we're gonna go on to we're gonna shall, shall we go on a break chat? Nah, we're not gonna go to let's just do, wait and see. I have a feeling that if we send it to a break, they're gonna just jump in back into uh, back into the game. So I don't want to I don't want to risk it, you know. We'll give it another like minute or so, and if uh, if it does take us so long, we're gonna we're gonna send it to a. Hopefully, we're gonna get a bit more action. Who's gonna come out on top of the? Bottom lane, Brewmaster versus Razor. I think Razor should actually dominate this brew. And we already see a couple last hits at the advance, but in front of the brew. Okay, we gotta go. Like I said, predicted. Dark Mago's back, no matter what the difficulty was. Need uh, South return from their trip to the south, to down south. Go, go, go. Go, go, Power Rangers. Nope. I apologize for that reference. <laughs> Finally, on their way. I'm going to take a look at this mid lane. Dark Mago, great way of uh, killing the creeps fast and then forcing Osito to tank the rest of the wave while he deals chip damage to him. That's how we saw him get himself in first blood territory. Hidden, being pursued by Masha in the air jungle. Was noble. The word will be. I run to the left. Oh. Quite a few 
our last hits for Osito right here, despite having over 80 damage for last hit, but now we'll pop the trample to damage the upper to push back Dark Mago, and it's gonna make Dark Mago miss a couple of last hits actually. Very nice play coming in from this Primal Beast. Up top, Arzen struggling versus Jim Park, who's hit level 3. Will be slightly more impressive, but only a single point in Attribute Shift, interesting. Wanting to have the waveform maybe to deal some en enough damage to kill the Eidolons from a single waveform. Plus a Crystal Nova. Nah, not entirely sure that's the plan, but we will have to wait. Up. Upper, and again, plus the, tra the Trample. The Onslaught, the Trample is the same. Onslaught, and Prada dies up top to Arzen. Now Jim Park is turning around, trying to heal the Enigma, but now the Eidolons are doing so much damage. Arzen is tanking the creeps, and Jim Park is getting lower and lower in HP. Marsha keeps on pursuing. Acting is in cooldown, and the Eidolons are gonna... Oh, shared. Arzen. But someone is in the trouble, but I think the support is gonna pick up the Nightmare, and now Darmago is just gonna chase down Shield Crash into... So trying to juke around, but he is a big, beefy boy, and now the Shield Crash is gonna come in more damage, uproar, and fairy fire. Austin from the high ground trying to do... I don't know what he was trying to do, he doesn't have mana for anything, and now Osito is going to actually use his spell to get away. Gonna get the bounty rune popped in the bottle, now the bottle will start using him to charge. He's level 5 to the level 4 of Dark Mago, and the chase does continue. As another tango, but now gets potted by the Thunderstrike. Does turn around with the trample and now glimps into the death of the swashbuckle by Dark Mago. Austin tries to get the right click onto Demon, but now the body block from Tango Leader will be enough as Masha. Rotated in mid trying to get something. Can they at least get the kill for the Warflame Courier? No, they cannot. Uh, that was a very long chase in the end. Going in the favor of East Star backs as uh, we have Arson up top. Being uh, shut down, thermal last hits for Jim Park. Some of those Radiant probably are the Eidolons, as we have double support up top in it. Prada will get caught by surprise by the tag team. Austin, Arzen, and Ingma gonna get the kill and Demon in mid. Getting him back into the hands of Dark Mago, but this time we do have the Onslaught. Onto the high ground. That would have been an awful dead back, a death back to back for the Primal Beast, but he will stay alive for the future. And bottom, we were talking about how I was expecting Razor to, I don't know, like, fish this Brewmaster, but that was thinking he would have a support with him. I am a one versus one matchup, especially at the level disadvantage. Clearly, <laughs> the Brewmaster is uh, coming out on top. And it's 6 rune. That is very important. For support to mid, and I was gonna stop the ultimate. Now, this noble gonna come in just not in time as Dark Mago pops the Rolling Thunder and Demon is there in the right position. Gonna glimpse up the task, and now the Ice Shards are gonna actually uh, put a hold into the attempt of Dark Mago, who's also gonna roll in and get the kill. And it's gonna be yet a second death for Osito's Primal Beast. Bosh Buckle, well, connecting to Austin. Still crash to get one more kill. B4-2, and yeah, not only all the last hits going in the favor of the cores of East star backs, but also everything, very curiously, actual kills, and it's XP, XP is a key element, yet again we see it, um, quite a bit of an XP advantage, not that dominating, but early on every single piece of experience matters, this time Team South will not gonna waste their experience with their wizard room, they will manage to collect it. Vito goes back mid. At level 5 when Dark Mago was level 4, now level 7. Level 5 of the Primal Beast. Idlin has completely turned around. are waiting for this big mailman cemetery in the sky. whatever timing we're waiting for i'm not quite sure we have an urn 
for the Enigma and they want to get on Prada. Prada will get caught by the Ice Charge and I think most probably will die to ours and dry clicks and we have the Wave from coming in the Blind Grenade as well but now I think gonna come in and the Swashbuckle is gonna be more than enough before the Nightmare connects and Demon is as well has two points in Glimpse and now the Nightmare gets collected and Demon spots Austin and will Glimpse him back up to the opponent high ground and now GP is gonna come in, in not in time as the Adaptive Strike connects stuns the Bane he is not on for the world in bottom xys and oscar are trading blows and razor are doing pretty well he was falling behind in the last hit department but now he is up to par with the brew the product coming in crystal nova frostbite can he get in range just gonna get him and xys oh nice juking from xys will start linking but now the primal split dark mother will get rotated through the portal and razor will also fall He's always in this. We're waiting for the Brewmaster to come out of the tower. I think he might need a bit of an assist unless Oscar tank the tower, but Osito will pursue. Look at Oscar finding a nice place in the trees. And I think he's waiting. He's waiting. The Bane is almost here. And they're gonna use the Pulverize. Osito gonna get a few tank and a few hits. And uh onslaught. One more right in the nightmare! That's actually gonna protect him from the tower last hit, but no, it's gonna be XYS collecting the kill with the plasma kill. Dark Mago does not have TP, but still has one more swashbuckle on top of the rolling thunder to disengage from this fight. Demon coming in to help them assist. Wording the observer word. Placed by the sentry, and now Dark Mago is gonna get snowballed in, but the glimpse is gonna come onto the bane. That's not gonna sell the tangle here as Demon also gets clipped by the eye shards in XYS. I think he wants the kill, but no, it's gonna be Osito collecting it for a double kill. Looks like Dyer's top tower is in some trouble. On bottom, XYS yet again. You know he's the winning condition for the side of the Radiant and he's getting chipped down by the nukes of Prada and Oscar, but now Arzen gonna come in just in time. He does have an uh, uh, black, 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 black hole and he's gonna come in at the very edge. I'm just joking chat. That's gonna be a two for none kill as we have five players from the Radiant down bottom. A TP a bit too late from Demon, but you can't do anything with level four Disruptor and that's a great turnaround, protecting your Razor. That's how they were trying to run, like chickens. Blah, 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 blah. Osito now finds himself a stack. Gonna start getting back into this game as he was falling very far behind. Still, 1k gold. Osito finds Dark Mago's Pangolier. It's an amplified damage and almost complete a defusal. Yes, it's complete. It's coming right now. But Prada is prodding at this Enigma who has yet finished his mech or Vladimir's. Or Oh, other than the yard, he doesn't have anything. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. Okay, fine, you can look. It's kind of funny. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. Okay, fine, you can look. the catapult alive, but now the four counter fortify is gonna be there. XYS does not want to deny the tower, does not want to risk it, doesn't know where all the heroes are and also go. And just start pulverizing, might just be slightly too early as Nusha was not there in position to help. And now the inhibit plus the swashbuckle. They're gonna make him lose a bit of HP and mana, but Austin. I might have been trying to set up for the fuse grip, grip and uh, gets caught by the support. Dark Mago has to use his amplifier to heal up. Use his bottle to heal up. Another minute cooldown, minute and a half. Back. Raph seemed to more than behave, more than be favoring E Starbucks 78% currently. Um, despite. Uh, so just a bit of or rolling thunder uh, into snowball, and now the primal beast comes in. Price just in time connects onto both. Dark Mago lower and lower HP. The was Swashbuckle yet yeah, again. Rolling Thunder. Osito gets caught. Do we have enough to turn around? XYS is here for the assist. And now we have the Primal Split. The support's dying in the back line. But Austin is going to come in with the Fiend's Grip. But Dark Mago finally falls in with the Gym Park. Very deep. He is morphed up into agility. He has a haste and he's caught by the Nightmare. We'll have to disengage if he wants to go and assist his team. XYS tries to survive between four opponents. And now he's getting pursued. Do we have anybody to help this man? But no. XYS gets killed by the Lotus. And oh my goodness, it turns around. He gets a double, can he get more? He cannot, as Oscar comes in and slays 
a prized razor all this time. You can tell Dyer's middle tower is in trouble from the way it's being destroyed. Enigma doing Enigma things. Fading away the tower, finally after pushing the lane. Black hole stealing cooldown from two team fights ago, and the Vladimir will fly him towards the Sneak Mine. Oh my goodness, that is gonna be so many last hits and so much gold going to Dark Mago only on the back of a swashback buckle. I'm just gonna say this was an Enigma picked into a Pangalier, so it wasn't like a Pangalier counter Enigma. He's got lots of ways at killing his Vadalons. How good the Fiendster can be yes. the pang, uh, uh, against here, and uh, followed up by the Nightmare instantly onto the Morphing. Well, that's really good. It managed to kill Jim okay, Park in that team fight. But is Austin going to be able to put the team on his back as a support? This time, not a disruptor with an AOE oppressive ult. So very quiet. Also changing the build up. Not the Blade Mill has to rush the BKB. Starting with the Mitchell. Interesting choice, to say the least. XYS has the Yasha on top of the Falcon Blade, and um, is not quite sure what he wants to start with. He's queued up the Shard, the PKB, the Manta style. Granted, it feels like he needs all three of them. But is he gonna get them in time, especially that he's not even topping the next card? And as we speak of Manta style, Morphling has a similar build up already. Very close, much closer to the Manta style than the Razor is. Middle tower is about to be a pile of smoking rocks. Dark Mago will get whoa, 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 what? Really that call? What? How did he die? Okay, wall response. It was noble war response getting the kill into the blue master, uh, who didn't have the split, but he's also getting closer and closer to having his radiance. And now we have a glimpse back, and that's gonna be a beautiful static storm to separate the razor from the vein. They will die without using his ultimate. And now we have the dark mago completely stuck. Will cut his own tree to get away. And now Arson gets stunned by the stun, and now the crystal maiden in the back lane will die. So will demon as he gets destroyed by the plasma field. And in the end, the black hole comes in at the very end of the rolling thunder static link and static storm and static for dead as the snowball connects from Masha they're pursuing for more they want at least this tier one tower of Jim Park still showing himself trying to maybe bait his opponents closer and closer we do have the primal split for the brewmaster skirmish fought by team now just reminding everybody at home if you're tuning in just now both of these teams currently find themselves in a 2-2 two and two scenario in this group stage A. Whoever loses here will be one step closer to elimination. None, none of, no team will be eliminated quite yet as they have one more game to play for tomorrow. But oh, blink in. We've got the blink dagger for Masha. Now we see why they stole the task pick in this game number two. Will get collected by Osito who really needed that kill. Um, one of the lower net worth cores on the server. Demon gets taken out of the server for just 25 seconds. Blinking now bottom. I don't think you can kill this Morphling without the Black Hole, though. Have the Blink potentially for the next team fight. Black Hole will be off the Prada. This observer works, but they can smoke. They spot each other. They're taking top hill, and now Prada spots the opponents. They try to do some damage, and a nice wraparound. From a Nightmare. He just right clicks in the end, brings up to get the final last hit for Austin. Also, Building for the Edgar line. Good, good build up, build up. Uh, but yeah, Masha and the Blink Dagger are going to be key for the foreseeable four minutes or so for Team South. If they can use this Tusk, it coughs well. Black holes in cooldown would be more than ideal, especially on Oscar. But Oscar has 
and then we spot him, the burn comes in, and we'll have to instantly I shard away, protect Austin, and that's gonna be a force rolling thunder. That's great usage by the support abilities to force the utility and get out, but Masha will uh Team Park will turn into him and now snowball by some time. Blink Dagger is going to come in off cooldown. We have the Blink Dagger. Perfect swashbuckle from Dark Mago, though, to interrupt the potential Blink at the very moment when the Snowball connected to Ips. Hope Dyer's middle tower is insured. That thing is standing on its last brick. Caesar, though. To sneak his way up to the second fourth position. He even, you know, have a Somewhere, and it's gonna be a nightmare. Austin still alive, but not for long as the primal split was forced, and the bait will die with another primal beast though. Jumping into the static storm to kill demon, and demon will die. BKB completed by Osito. I didn't even know when that happened. And now Oscar gonna jump in back to his normal form. Still has the radiance. BKB nine second forced only to kill a support and I call off cooldown. Illusions will show in lane. Bias. But back at it on the lane. Has Manta style as well. Osito. Masha. His spot is brought us. Gonna come to the, the bigger target in mind. It's gonna be the Morphling. It's more for Adji. He doesn't even manage to get Black Hole to bait it out. And now Arsene got to get pursued. He has to Black Hole the Pangolier. He's gonna force the fighting in two different sides. And Prada's gonna die, but it's gonna be a trade for the middle. Sito. Oscar just right clicking and burning everybody away with his Brewmaster Radius. And now Arsene, despite a Black Hole full channel onto Dark Mago, he will fall in the end. And now the Fiend's Rift gonna come in. And Dark Mago is gonna keep pursuing. Now picks up the Arcane Rune. Can we catch him? Nightmare gonna connect. And is he gonna be there? Yes, it is. The Look at XYS, gotta wait to get closer now. Plasma Field, still such a tanky, beefy pri- Oh my Bangle here. What a hero, ladies and gentlemen. I hate it. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. If you're in the vicinity of Dyer's top tower, I'd put on a hard hat. That baby is coming down. In the end, pretty even trade. Um... Pangolier stays alive as a core for E-Star backs, and uh, Razor stays alive for the side of Team South. But now, I've got a feeling E-Star backs will want to fight that the Black Hole is on cooldown. A longer cooldown than the Rolling Thunder, and I think that's going to be the perfect timing for the Dire to go yet for another skirmish. Aghanim Shard completed. Or... Why yes. They're really trying to do some damage to the tower. Didn't manage to get the tier 1 bottom. They're gonna try to tier 1 mid, still half HP. And Demon has a static storm. And that's what I'm talking about. The cooldown differential is too much. Even the primal split will be back in 10 seconds, whereas the Enigma one will be in 90. And now static storm, kinetic field after the perfect wins. Oscar just right and so we just raise it away from for a bit of an assist and an adaptive strike to secure the kill. It was completely alone. This razor was completely alone. And instead of getting the tier 1 they wanted, they are about to give away a tier 1. Not just for free, but alongside a Razor's life. And a thousand gold lead swing only because you lost the top net worth hero on the server. And if you're a position 1 Razor, you're not an anti-mage, you're not a weaver, you don't have a timeless, you're not even a faceless void for a time walk. You, you, you don't have an escape, an inert, inherent escape mechanism. Uh, rare mistake from XYS, who's had otherwise a really impressive game on the ring. Radiance middle tower is hanging on by a brick. Almost level 15. Would have loved to not give away his life in mid. Might actually be a very costly mistake from XYS. As, uh, now the gold lead is actually mounting up even higher and higher for E-Star backs. Uh, Disruptor is building towards a Lotus Orb. Great choice versus uh, uh, Malefice. And uh, of course, adding Link himself. And now the top and the Twin Gate up top. Ask Masha, I know you're making space for your team. Oh, just TPing away. Very good. Forcing the TP in the smoke to get him, he's gonna engage, not gonna get caught. Very good, Masha. Even in game number one, he played a very impressive hoodwink. Wow. Arzen says, you know what, we're gonna go in for, uh, we're gonna take us, this game's gonna take a while. So let me, let me just get a Midas for this. I'm gonna get a Midas, I'm gonna start using it, and I'm gonna play for the Ultra Late Game, minute 21. Uh, fair enough, you went for the Vladimir's first, um, which is the team item, then the Blink Dagger for the team fight item. 
he already had the urn and goes back for the Midas, realizing um, as an enigma you can't really have the space to farm and if you win team fights, it's perfect. But pinging the Roshan, they have a shield run for Osito and I think they're just gonna sneak this Rosh up. Got a drawing coming in from Jim Park. They're going on the map and they're gonna end up in the Roshan pit. We've got a Lincoln Sphere completed on Morphling Minute 21. Life on this Roshan looking like, and it's getting lower and lower. Maybe this is the perfect setup. Arzen might want to just bait the opponents in. If you can get a five people black hole, we have this. I have the storm already activated. The Roshan's not gonna fall. We have a Rolling Thunder gonna come in with the PKB. But now, Pulverize gonna come in, but Jim Punch just blows up Austin in the back line, and it's not gonna be enough. Arzen gonna come in and gonna kill the Pangolier. It's a one for one support for mid, but the Roshan is going lower and lower HP. Who's gonna get the last hit? But everybody dies. They're all dead! No black hole, no primal beast, and it's an ultra kill for Jim Park, who collects the Aegis kill and the Roshan in the process. I meant to say the Roshan kill and the Aegis in the process, but hey chat, we're all 12,000 uh, MMR here, so we know what I meant. Uh, no black hole. It was great from Jim Park, who focused on killing... Uh, the Bane here didn't get the chance of get, letting the uh, Fiends go. go. Lost the Aegis, lost the Roshan Gold. Losing the Tier 2 Tower. On the bright side, yes, you still have the Black Hole and the Fiends Grip if you want to fight into an Aegis Morph. Level 17, Galactory, gonna be completing the Kandai anytime soon. He doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, but Lotus has been completed on the Disruptor. We've got a Lotus Sword for Disruptor, as well as a Lincoln Sphere on the Morphling. A uh, Pangolier has Agonims, the Bull Basher. Sylvester. Wow, building already his Octarine. He's got the Treble Boots, he doesn't need any. At least he feels like he does. All the three cores of our packs are popping up. So far behind. Punished. Not having a beat. Quite a well. Uh, Masha, can you blink away? I can. Okay, Jim Park. Oscar. Okay. Not. Great waveform as well as the lead. Get this. Plus kill. 45 seconds. Dead. Who do you even target if you're Austin? Can you target anyone? You're got Lotus, tower, Lincolns, and Disruptors. Tower, 91%. Be 91% win rate uh, according to Dota Plus towards Beast Pack. Struggle to see how this Midas will pay off. If are knocking at your door in the next two minutes or so. Uh, they're also gonna steal the Tormentor. Demon is gonna get his Aghanim Shard, one of the... Um, people love this Aghanim Shard on Disruptor. I, I like it as well. I don't necessarily think it's as strong as everybody makes it seem, uh, but it is a very good Shard compared to the Tusk one talked about last game. Uh, but they're not gonna go for the um, tier threes. Eastar Bax realizes they're in control of this match, and as you should, Highest level of Dota. If you've got an advantage, you should squeeze out the map as much as possible. You don't want to commit any mistakes, especially not when you play versus a nigga. There is a world. Might be this one. Yeah, Arson just got blown up by Jim Park. But there's a world where this Tusk will have his BKB sooner. Oscar just uses the travel boots, goes back down after the fi farming up top, and now the Nightmare gonna reveal the position. Osito down to half HP, Jim Park, Lincoln pops it, but it's just gonna jump on top of Austin. And now, Enfeeble, and by some time, Green Dagger, Rolling Thunder, Osito will interrupt that. Can Austin use anything? No, Austin still has the buyback, so does the Enigma. They managed manage to kill the Pangolier, and it's a 2 versus 4, but the buybacks are coming, and Jim Park getting lower and lower, and the damage from the Razor is getting stolen. He's got 150, but he's still gonna die! Oscar does so much work with this Primal Beast. Jim Park essentially just diving beyond the tier 4s, and it's gonna be the Bane die back to start off the team fight. The Enigma did not want to purchase herself back in. 
Now it's going to be a three versus five. We've got Masha jumping in, popping, blowing off the ages. So can Masha get away or is he going to pay with his life? And it's going to be the latter as Arzen comes back. Black hole does for one second. Primal Beast alone. Tusk with the buyback. Osito tries to get one more kill but does gives back. Oscar will manage to get that kill. And now Masha alone will respond for the world. One versus three will not get the kill. We'll get the kill actually, she still made us dead. <laughs> but is it gonna matter? Fighting in a base, back and forth, back and forth. A black hole that lasted less than a split second. And now the melee racks will pretty much be up for the taking. One more fortify available for the Radiant. We're not even gonna use it for this top set of racks. They realize they can only use a single set of racks. Uh, they have a tier 2 mid and the Dyer would have to go for a full rotate down bottom if they wanted the second. We need another 2 minutes to see second black hole attempt. But like I said, who do you even focus? Saw poor Austin, had a great start to the game. We saw him in the game number 1 with the Disruptor, but right now he's just getting countered by the Lincolns, by the Lotus, by the heroes that can burst you out of the server. Speaking of in Park, Panda completed before that team fight and almost has the Satanic. Oh my goodness, XYS, that was a single adaptive strike for the Kanda. Arzim dies yet again, caught by Dark Mago, Oscar, and Prada. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have a black hole for 70 seconds, so fine. Twenty-four thousand gold lead for E-Star back. Ninety-nine percent win rate probability according to Dota Plus and Prada's gonna use the Crystal Nova's gonna spot Osido, Cinder Blue, and now Frostbite. You know, has to pop the uproar to dispel. Getting pursued and now glimpse back into the nightmare. Osido will be forcing the PKB, but that was a static storm already used by Demon. Forty seconds until we get the black hole. Osito just Overizing the Storm Panda now tier three low for Masha. Oh my God, he's low HP. Gonna jump in the backline of the Bane and Bane just dies. No fin script yet again. Arzen gonna jump in, but he doesn't have the black hole. He blows up. He has a buyback. No black hole for another twenty seconds, but the Primal Beast is dead. And Arzen calls the good game. Two zero victory for E Star back, who pretty much guaranteed themselves a spot in the top four and the playoffs of EPL World Series. Exceptional performance for Jim Park. First on the Shadow Fiend, which we doubted when we saw the pick. I doubt it. Um, but now the staple Morphling Grandmaster 18 2 and 8. A pretty impressive performance from the position one of E Star Backs. Mid lane, we saw the same matchup Primal Beast versus Pangalier. Second time around, slightly better, but in the end, the different build did not end up helping the side of South Team. And I gotta say, they, they were punished a lot. It, it felt like the momentum slipped out of their fingers at the end of game number one. They felt completely deflated, unable to take us to a game three, which would have been amazing. I would have loved the moment, but that is it. First series of the day. I'm now taking a, just a quick look at what else we can expect from about 48 minutes.